Hello there folks and welcome back to Donkcast. Today we're going to be talking all about German and regionals that just happened this weekend. We've got some new GXs that have got their English releases officially. They'll be coming out in Lost Thunder. We'll be talking about them. But first, before we get into that, let's bring in our co-host for this week. First up, we've got Jacob. Hey. And obviously, Ian's here as well. Hi guys, how are we doing? <laughs> obviously. Obviously. Hi, obviously. obviously. Nothing obviously. else to do. Nothing better to do in my life now. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into all the exciting GX cards that have been released this week, what have you guys been up to? Work. <laughs> <laughs> Work. <laughs> Much nothing, no, yeah, nothing too exciting, unfortunately. I... Changing my Pokemon philosophy, but we'll get into that a wee bit. Changing later. my Pokemon philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Although, I was I was playing bowls on Saturday, which is slightly different, and we we won that. Poke which bowls. Is, which is good. Uh, no, not quite Poke bowls. No, <laughs> no, 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 but. Uh, I did win, so hey, maybe I might quit Pokemon and go bowling full time. Fair enough, man. You're supposed to say. <laughs> no, 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 we're we're going to support you in your endeavours. <laughs> I'll support you for like two weeks and then I'll start whinging. <laughs> what, that you get. that you can't beat me or something? I don't know. I'm not there to beat you. I'm not there to beat you. Jacob, it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need your Kiawe on uh, Tag Team GX like electric types for the four rainbow brushes plays to make the, the week more exciting. Yeah. <laughs> well, I managed to catch my Celebi in Pokemon Go this morning, so I was pretty happy about that. That's managed awesome. to sneak a wee Mr. Mime in the way into work, so I was like, yes, here we go. Um... <laughs> He was sitting right outside. I was like, yes, I need one more psychic or grass type, so you'll do. So I've got a little screenshot of my celebi flying around my, my, my unit while I was trying to like, start work today. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, apart from that, I've not really been doing a whole lot of Pokemon stuff. I did do some recording for the first time in a while, which was so refreshing. That was cool. Um, do love making videos for YouTube, the deck videos and stuff, so... One of them is live on the channel, Heracross, um, with Hustle Belt, which is possibly one of the funnest decks I think I've ever played with. That was hilarious. Um, I don't. I want to put you guys on the spot here, but have any of you had a chance to watch it yet? Oh, hands up, honestly, haven't had a chance, but I do plan on watching it as soon as this is done. Mate, I know. I'm sorry. Hallway. No, no, that's it's totally okay. But like, it it was only like a one match. Um, video because the match was so hilariously funny the guy was playing like buzz garb or something like that and he was attacking me for like 200 damage and i was mm -hmm. flipping the heads and not dying and oh, then just God. knocking him out in return and it was just like I, I was actually like i couldn't contain myself in the video i was gutting myself laughing because it was just like this guy must be raging <laughs> Yeah. Who's, who's betting he's like smashing yeah. his people? <laughs> it must be absolutely foaming. I was like, yes! <laughs> See, I love the idea of that, but coin flip scared me. Oh, yeah. Like, I would never take it to anything with remote seriousness ever, but like for a little league deck, maybe a challenge oh, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah that's fun. hilarious, man. That was hilarious, but yeah, such a cool idea. I'm loving this format that, like, it's truly viable now with Shrine of Punishments to just play all these wacky one prize attackers and just pretend like it's a good deck. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, yeah, so let, let's jump into the news for this week. Um, we did get a few English releases thanks to Poke Beach. I'm going to bring that onto the screen right now. Totally not awkward there. Just while I, there we go. So we got released a uh, Four GX cards and one Prism Star Stadium. Uh, two of these uh, I don't think are that great. Suicune GX isn't the best card in the world, we should say. Um, <sighs> it's a shame though because Raikou and Entei are both garbage as well. Yeah. Um, so like, not one of them is is good. It's which just is quite a shame because they yeah. are cool Pokemon. Well, I don't know. I I I think you might be missing a missing a thing here because you can attack. 
you can retreat and then shuffle that back in. So it's essentially a free Ace Roller. So I think so you can could be better than you think. The Ace of Roller is better because you get the cards back in your hand so you can replay the energies and stuff like that. Shuffling it back yeah. into your deck kinda doesn't do much. It just clunks up your deck. And its attack mean? cost is so awkward as well. It's not even mm, water yeah. DTE. Yeah. It's too water. It's, yeah, it could work, but it's just one of those, yeah, it could work with like 20 cards in your hand sort of cards, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just a bit awkward. For those of you that are just listening, uh, ability Phantom wins once during your turn before you attack. If this Pokemon is on your bench, you may shuffle it in all cards attached to it in your deck. Has a bit of synergy with the GX attack like Jacob was getting at earlier. Two water and a colourless. Brinicles GX? I've not even read that. That's amazing. Um, 150 damage. Switch this with one of your bench Pokemon. It's just not that much damage for a GX attack. We've seen Incineroar do well Incineroar at a stage 2 to be fair but like 150 damage seems really low for yeah, it's um, for what it's doing it's Galissapod's GX attack yeah I suppose but with a worse the other cost attack, yeah worse cost the other attack isn't as good um, okay it is a basic so it's not a stage cure one. stream 120 during your opponent's next turn the defending Pokemon's attacks do 30 less damage I mean, you never know. It might see some play. That that energy cost is garbage. Um, it doesn't seem to be doing all that much damage. It's got 180 HP. It could be 190. The two retreat, it could be one. Eh, I'm not a fan. Yeah. No, me neither. That's not one you want to pull. Same with Lugia. Well, um, sorry, sorry on you. So I, I was moving on to Lugia. So if you want to, if you want to quickly throw in something there. Um, no, I think it's not the best but it's not the worst we have seen a lot worse it's at least playable in my opinion playable ish um, I'll, I'll give you playable ish we'll take that as a challenge then <laughs> well, I will make it work you could kiawi onto it and then rainbow paint <laughs> oh, <no. to> the <laughs> energies <laughs> um, look nah, at... you're just wasting energy then. <laughs> Lugia GX <laughs> is another one I'm not overly excited about, but do you know what? It's probably better than Suicune in my eyes. 190 HP, colourless Pokemon, Psychic for 3 colourless, 30 plus. This attack does 30 more damage times the number of energy cards attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Um, Not great. And then Pelagic Blade, which was one I had to ask Ian what it meant earlier, because I had no idea what <laughs> pelagic meant. And what does pelagic mean, Ian? It means like open seas. So, um, the, the, according to Google, the blade of the open sea. <laughs> this attack, uh, this Pokemon can't use pelagic blade during your next turn. 170 damage for four colorless energy. Doesn't actually seem all too bad. When you consider powering it up in something like a Malamar deck, we've seen uh, Shining Lugia see quite a bit of play recently. Lugia GX could come in with Pelagic Blade, do 170 damage, and win a game. Doesn't yeah. seem... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> It's called... Just straight in there, Kiawe. Oh, Kiawe daft. Why don't, like, if you really want a Kiawe onto something that bad, just use O. Oh, it does more. Or, or Reshiram. <laughs> well, no, because you're doing 170 turn 2, if you get, get the Kiawe turn 1. Yeah, and someone attaches a DC to a Lely and smacks you right back. <laughs> Maybe. Ho we'll does see. 180 for a Kiawe turn one. <laughs> just play Ho Kiawe. Well, you just said someone attaches a DC to a Lely, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. And then Lost Purge GX for three colorless energy. Put your opponent's active Pokemon and all cards attached to it into the Lost Zone, which I actually think is a really cool GX tech. Um, it takes away something. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not awful. Um, maybe Lugia. Maybe looking at Lugia again, maybe it's a little bit better than I first thought. Um, and as you. In Malamar decks, I can definitely see it seeing some play. Yeah, well, that's the thing, as you say, like in Malamar, which if you're playing the more kind of new school Malamars with yeah. the Shining Legacies, etc., they don't really play GX attackers other than maybe no. Necrozma. Yeah. So if you don't want to play Necrozma or you want to give yourself an alternate GX attack, this 
It could be something. It's not, it's not bad. It's not bad. 170 damage is a, a good whack of damage on a colorless Pokemon. Uh, bear in mind, it can use DCEs. It can use any energy, so it can be teched in any deck. Um, the first attack, I don't rate. The first attack is not good. Uh, 30 plus 30 times the amount of damage on uh, the amount of energy an opponent like you're assuming the opponent has maybe two energy on it it's doing like 90 damage it's not good <laughs> no, it's definitely if not. your opponent has zero damage on it you're doing 30 damage for three energy that's really really bad um mm. the next cards we'll quickly go over are kind of a pair um zero aura gx and thunder mountain prism F uh, we'll talk about zero aura first really nice card genuinely one of my favorite cards coming out of this new set because of thunder mountain um thunderclap zone each of your pokemon that has lightning energy attached to it free retreat cost so that's awesome to begin with and then plasma fists 160 damage this pokemon can't attack during your next turn but if you've got energy on the board i mean you got free retreat so you just retreat and then goes with something and then you knock something else out for 160 damage. It's Buzzwall, but with free retreat. This is amazing. And then full voltage GX attacks five basic energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. I like that as well. Yeah, just throw in a Turtonator GX attack. There. Exactly. Like it, it powers itself up. It's really, really like easy to use. It's free retreat. And then if you use Thunder Mountain Prism Star, which is the next card I wanted to talk about as a pair. The attacks of your lightning Pokemon, both yours or your opponents, cost one lightning less. So suddenly, Plasma Fists is doing 160 damage for two energy. A lightning and a colourless. That's busted! It is, it's ridiculous. It's so, so good. Um, and then there's a lot of electric cards coming out in the next set, like the Electro Power or something like that it's called. It does, it lets your electric Pokemon do 30 more damage for the turn. It's yeah. like plus power, but three of them, but only for electric Pokemon. And then you've got and choice they band and the stack. So you've got choice band, those things. Like suddenly this is becoming a really cool deck. And it it plays itself. Like this is one of those it's one of those decks that I would recommend to players that are recently getting into the game. If they start playing during Lost Thunder, I'm gonna say to them, look this thing is all in lost thunder get yourself some of those packs and pull some zero aura because like it's really really cool when a deck is more or less contained within the one set they don't have to go back to like guardians rising and get a tapu coco card or something like that do you know what i mean like that makes the deck they don't need a vika volt from sun and moon base to make the deck useful like rayquaza do you know what i mean it's super easy for someone to get into the game and use a card like this absolutely it's and it's a super powerful card as well the the one drawback i guess that you would say it has is it's weak to fighting yeah um, and the amount of buzz wall running about particularly baby buzz gives it a wee bit of an issue but even that you're still not too worried i mean look at how successful zoroark was for a while when buzz walls were everywhere exactly so i mean the weakness isn't the thing that that makes the card rubbish by any stretch it's something to consider obviously yeah but i'm i'm really excited to play zero aura um speaking of thunder mountain though the card that i'm even more excited to play with thunder mountains ampharos gx <laughs> um, ampharos and dark order yeah yeah which we might save for for a later date but uh, i just saw him recently and I, as you know i love ampharos i mean and i think that card is legit really good ampharos alola nine tails gx man <laughs> it's gonna be so busted it's such a pretty card as well it's such a pretty card we'll bring it up just before we finish talking about uh these new english cards because there's one more i do want to talk about before we go any further and that is the star of today's show is blacephalon gx this card has been tearing it up in japan it won two of the three regional uh, no it won two it won a uh, was it masters and seniors juniors and seniors I juniors think, and seniors second in masters at the japanese yeah. champions league card is busted so uh bursting burn for one energy one fire energy your opponent's active pokemon is now burned and confused for a single energy attack first turn of the game that is really nice you're going to be doing 20 damage through the burn guaranteed and then your opponent's also confused so chances are they're not attacking you they're also burned like this is this is already pretty cool 
I mean, you're forcing them straight away into a situation where they need to switch or evolve um, or do something. Or evolve. Yeah, yeah they, they have to do something to get rid of it. It's like Espeon uh, GX's first attack that does 30 yeah. damage and confusion. This is kind of the same. It's going to do 20 damage and confusion, but the 20 damage is burned, so that could be even more. So it's, it's nice. Yeah. I like it. And then Mind Blown, the attack that you're going to be playing it for. Two fire energy. Put any amount of fire energy attached to your Pokemon in the Lost Zone. So it's not this Pokemon, it's your Pokemon. This attack does 50 damage for each card put in the Lost Zone in this way. So basically you're going to build up fire energy on the board. You're using things like uh, Baby Nagging Needle. When you evolve it up, you take an energy from the discard or from the deck? I think it's the discard. From the discard. and then I think it's once during your turn you can attach in the discard. Oh, really? I think it is. Ooh. Surely not. Um, you use... There's the, there's Heat Factory Prism Star. That's a thing. So Heat Factory is another card coming out in this. It's one of those Prism Star stadiums. You discard a fire and you draw three, I think it is. Um, so basically, yeah. you discard the fire and then you use Naganadal's energy to retrieve them and put them on in Blissephalon. Yes, I've read that right there. I can read with my face. And then... Basically, the idea is you just get the energy onto the board as quickly as you can um, and just mind-blown, take some prizes. And then when your opponent brings you down to, like, uh, four prizes, or when your opponent goes down to four prizes remaining or three prizes remaining, you just start ramping on energy with B-String and just keep doing mind-blown. Just knock out, knock out, knock out, win the game. You can also Kiawe, you can... Oh, there's, there's plenty of ways to just accelerate energies onto your Pokemon. Um, but definitely, like, the Naginado, Kiawe, the B-Strings, Dead Dead Easy, Deck. Like, come on, man. Like, this is a, such a good card. And um, ba Baby Nag is once during your turn from the discard. What? So it's, it's even more busted. That is and even it, better than I thought it was. And just that card on its own, it, it's three colourless energy. So it's a built-in Buzzwall counter if Buzzwall GX ever starts running rampant what again. What you have to remember, though, is you're putting these fire energy into the lost zone. Yeah, so, so you, need you do play... need to continuously discard yeah. the energies. That's the only thing. So, but, like Ultra Ball, Acro Bike... Mysterious um, Treasure. Mysterious Treasure, yeah. These are all kind of reliable ways, I guess you might say. I think it was playing Sightseer as well, and I can't remember yeah. what Sightseer does. Sightseers, um, discard as many cards as you want from your hand, then drop yes, to five. Yes, that's exactly that, what it that's, is. That's the card that breaks it. So both of these decks played upwards of 14 fire energies. One played 16 and a beast energy, one played 14 and a beast energy. So the idea is pretty simple. Just get as many fire energies as the discard as you possibly can, put them back on Managanadal, and then suddenly Blacephalon is doing a hella damage. That is such a cool card. And then Burst yes. GX for one fire energy. Discard one of your prize cards. If it is if it is an energy card, attach it to one of your Pokemon. Eh? Discard one of your prize cards. Does that count as yeah. taking a prize? It, yes. Well, yeah. So like it won't you won't get it into hand, but you'll go from six prizes to five prizes. So That's it's Cartana's actually GX really attack. good. It, without the the um getting like going into your hand yeah so you, you won't you won't get used to it of the card unless it's an unless energy it's, unless, unless it's, it's an energy. energy but then yeah. if i mean that's a pretty good like if you know your opponent's going to evolve or your opponent's going to switch and you don't want to burn or confuse it that's a really nice turn one gx deck yeah you could use that in fact here's an idea why not use that turn one like regardless then you've burnt your GX attack, suddenly you can use Hala. And yeah. Hala is a better card than Cynthia if you've used your GX. Yeah, absolutely. Sh shuffle draw seven. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad idea. The Definitely not. The um, seniors list played a pretty simple list. Like, there was no any crazy text or anything like that in it. Um, it was Blacephalon, Naganadal, 4-3 line, uh, 2... Two Tapu Lele and then four B String, one Kiawe. Pretty simple list. Three sites here in that one. The Juniors one, however, played a one 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 line of wait for it. Ditto Prism Star, Alolan Muck, and Salazzle GX. 
<laughs> because that's a thing now. <laughs> that's pretty insane. The Ditto Prism Star counts as essentially a fifth poi pole. It counts for an Alolan Grimer, and it would count for a Solandit. Now, basically, what it said, like it, it, it kind of makes its, it it makes sense. Like if your opponent's going to be using basic, like, um, basic Pokemon abilities, just drop a Alolan Muck, and then suddenly their strategy is really, really messed up. If because you're only playing one Tapu Lele in that deck, maybe two. Um, if they're not, then Ditto Prism Star is not wasted because you can either evolve it in an Aganadal or you can evolve it in a Slazzle GX and you've got a really nice attacker for two energy. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, what a deck. Cool. Um, see, I, I prefer the first version, I have to say. I like. I think so as well. Just let's go hyper consistent. Let's yeah. do what fire decks always do and just major, major damage. Loads of damage, loads of energies, loads of energies flying about the place. Like, Thing called Volcanian lists that would discard three, four energies in a turn with Volcanian's ability, and then suddenly yep. still attach energies <laughs> and do crazy damage. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm all in on Bliss Ephelon GX. I think it's by far the best card on the set. When I first saw it, I was like, I don't, I don't think it's that good. But it's the and cards then, that come with it that make it. Exactly. Then Naganado was released, and you think about sites you see and all that other kind yeah. of stuff, and you, you realise it's just factory. ridiculous. It is such a beautiful card. <laughs> it's such a beautiful it's... card. I I can see me playing the holy hell out of this. And... Oh, definitely, definitely. I, the thing with it is as well, like. It has a pretty okay matchup against like Baby Buzz Garb because you can literally start attacking with Nagging Needles to like stop the price trade being so bad. Um and you can also burn and confuse them. Like that's that's significant. If you can confuse them, then you get an extra turn to attack. You know, you don't have to use there's not a whole lot of item cards you need to use to make this deck work either. Definitely. So Garb's not doing all that much to you if if you have to kind of restrain yourself garb doesn't need to do that much to you yes you take three discards to knock them out which is a bit of an issue but if it starts becoming really bad you could even take in a tapu coco baby and just flying flip one time flying yeah. flip one time and suddenly you're like two lost zoning cards um knock out a garb and you would need the third to knock out buzzwall but i mean they may have to play rainbow energy in that deck um, so you would assume that Buzzwell might have 120 every now and again so the yeah. flying flip Coco could actually be really nice um, mm -hmm. but yeah definitely definitely such a cool card man such a cool card my favourite card and I did say I would quickly grab up the image of the Ampharos for you <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, I do like the Ampharos a lot man I think he's cool it's such a beautiful card there he is there, there he is there. Obviously you guys can't see this, but I, I can assure you it's on screen. <laughs> <laughs> we, so, yeah. we believe you. So the He's maybe one for closer to the time, I guess. I think, really yeah, we, we won't bother going over the moves and stuff. stuff. We won't bother um, going over the moves and the decks, because it hasn't even been released in Japan yet. Or it's only just been released in Japan. So that, yeah. that it's not even in their format yet. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about this when it comes out, but like, just look at the artwork on that, it's beautiful. And it, it definitely deserves a, a quick moment in the spotlight. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so yeah, but that, that's Lost Thunder. That's that's still a few weeks away. What we did have this weekend was regionals in Germany. Now, if I can just grab up a list of the decks. Here we go. Just setting this up. And... German regionals was interesting, guys. Very, Extremely. very interesting. Oh, I've pressed the wrong button. No, no. See, now it looks totally unprofessional on the pod because I'm doing stuff and changing stuff and deck list serial. <laughs> um, German regionals was interesting, man. It was won by Hump, Hampus Ericsson. I want to say Hampus. I've probably butchered that name. But he played a Sylveon GX Denial deck and it is Ugh. disgusting, man. It's so nasty. He's such an evil person for bringing this deck into my life. But 
I will say it's very nice. Um, the deck is obviously evil incarnate. Like we're not even going to argue that, but it's very very nice in what it does. It has two ways of going. So the first way is against like usually against like GX decks. You basically run them out of energy and don't lose. You just let them run out of energy and have to scoop or or they'll pra- they'll uh, deck out. Basically that is the the game with the Sylveon deck. Or if you're against Pokemon that can be knocked out, you stick on a double colorless and just start doing 110 every turn and just wait until your opponent can't do anything. Against Baby Buzz, Garb, stuff like that. Baby Buzz, it's got the Professor Cookway, so you can do 130 and knock out the Baby Buzz. And you basically just run through it like that and you go hyper aggressive and it's nasty. It plays so many cards to just just make your day a little bit worse. Two Team Skullgrunt, four Plumeria. It's got Issa Rollers, it's got um, Mars, it's got Gladion, it's got... It's just typical cards that we always see in these really, really hateful decks. And it's it's pure evil, and it won, and now I have to consider Sylveon Denial when I'm building a deck, and I really don't like that. <laughs> oh, I, mean, same. I cannot stand this deck. I mean, fair, fair play that, that that guy managed to get through two full days of playing this because after like three games of this, I think I'd be just wanting to tear my hair out. Yeah, it's um, it's a oh. really high level of play to be able to make a deck like this work. Oh, you definitely. need to be a very good player to make a deck like this work. I'm telling you right now, I would fail this deck every single time. Oh, I'm the exact same. I can never but... play this deck. <laughs> you need so much patience. You need to know exactly when to play the Skullgrunt, when to play the Plumeria, when to play the Mars. Or uh, it's just, it's too much thinking. Definitely. I just want to, just want to blow things up. That's pretty exactly, much it. Exactly, man. <laughs> That's exactly it. I, I want to get my five energy down on the board for Bliss Ethelon and do 250 damage to anything I want to do 250 damage to. <laughs> Oh, that, for, oh man. That's the one thing here. Maybe Blissephalon is partly a counter to this. Uh, I don't know. Can you. If they don't knock out the Nagging Needles and you set up. You set up enough and you can keep the energy on the Blissephalon, maybe if you can fuse it as well. The trouble is, you have to get the Blissephalon into the active. Because what they'll do is. They'll play one Sylveon GX so that you can't Guzma. Yeah. And they'll literally make you sit in the active with whatever you have with the highest retreat cost, which is probably, I'm guessing, either Naganil. I don't know what Naganil has as a retreat cost. I'm guessing it's one or two. So it's either that or it's a Blacephalon because you would need to attack twice. What you can do is confuse it, though. So yeah. you've got a bit of an option, but it'll just run you out of energy. It'll run yeah. out of energy. I mean, I guess you have a fairly decent counter to it and that you can just turbo the energy on from the the discard which is pretty okay um stuff like malamar should have a better matchup against it but the problem is we're not seeing malamar with ultra necrosman we're seeing malamar with spread we're seeing malamar with um just other cards so you're not going to have a lot of ultra necrosma ultra necrosma is even weak to it do you know what i mean so that's another point um, Absolutely. I guess other Necrozma, like basic Necrozma, I guess you could call it, the old one that does energy discard big damage. It's like 60 for every energy you discard, like that. Even that has to discard 4 energy and it has to get into the active and it, it's just so much. We're, uh, we're missing Floatstone a lot here. Oh, we're, we're missing Floatstone, but I thought Sylveon was gone, man. I so thought when I. we lost... Um, Flare Grunt and Delinquent and um, Parallel City. Parallel City, yeah. Like, there were so many cards in the format before that we just don't have anymore. And suddenly, Big, big Hampus just rocks up with Sylveon and just wins the whole blooming thing. It's crazy, man. It's just... And the, the one card that you can maybe... you taking any deck to try and help deal with it's a Rangaroo. Even then. 
So you, you, you need an energy on an anger. True. True, but... Just judge. Just photo of judge. Don't let them get any magical ribbon off and hope for the best. That's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. My, my plan's hope they whiff the energy and KO the Eevee. <laughs> Just, just bonk. <laughs> four prize Sylveon that's what we're all hoping for <laughs> so yeah no big up to mark uh, hampus man like he he's clearly a very very good player i've not heard of his name before um but holy hell man that is that's a very interesting deck and pff, more power to you man more power to you he unseeded rayquaza gx in the final pretty given that it was going to take that but requires a gx with vikavolt playing in shine and Lugia. <laughs> okay why is it playing shine and Lugia? <laughs> i think they're playing shine and Lugia in place of um delmice that's been running around okay uh, because the people have been using that to counter uh, baby buzz shrine decks okay yeah um, be- because uh, delmice hits 130 obviously um, and as does Shane Lugia for three yeah. energy, and Shane Lugia does the same thing, and obviously Vika Volt can accelerate and it, it on. So and it also plays a one of Shaman from uh, Shiny Legends. I'm guessing it do pretty much the same thing. Uh, Rally yeah. back's going to do 120, so yeah, pretty much the same idea there. Um, sorry to interrupt. If no, you go all. to that that guy's um account or um oh yeah, yeah, yeah. career stats, it was his first regionals or. Interact like there is nothing apart there from that nothing. one he just won. Yeah, I'm bringing that up on the screen. Oh yeah, man! Imagine being that guy, man. Oh, that's broken. That's just not okay. But but no matter how much you showered, you would never feel clean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, running down the list a little bit here, we'll skip out some of the decks that we've seen before. I do want to go to sixth place. Um. I, Isla Kornilov, I guess I've ripped that name as well, but we'll Ilya. Go Ilya? Sure. Yeah. Um <laughs> So Zoroark Buzzwall GX. Now this is a deck we have been talking about for some time. Jacob's played this deck on and off since like last format. On the way back from Sheffield Regionals, we net decked the hell out of this we we really try hard at this on the way back from sheffield regionals we were like no this is the yep. best deck in format guys we've, we've <laughs> broken the format when we got into this format i started playing this deck and realized how powerful it was in turn one of the game but then thought it's not good it's not good but apparently apparently we were all right all along because it got sixth place Four Zoroark, two Buzzwall, one Baby Buzzwall, and a Lycanroc GX seems pretty fine. Yep, it, it yep. all checks out. It all checks out. The energy is something that actually has caught me off guard, is actually using the double colorless energy. It, I didn't think the double color, double colorless energy was all that good because I was trying to play it with more Buzzwall GX, and I think that's where I've had the issue, is that I was focusing too much on the Buzzwall GX when really you don't need the buzzwall gx if you're going to be string onto it as well like you don't need the fighting energy in hand so playing six fighting energy is fine i, I guess that's where i had the problem with it because yeah, I'm, I'm with you there because i, I just want to point out i did have dce in you it did you have, told me to take it yeah, out we did we did yeah. look so i'm just saying at some point what? we have had all 60 of these cards in a deck at some point yep. they might have not been yeah. in the same deck at the same time but all 60 <laughs> of these cards were in the deck w- at some point i would point out as well jacob that you weren't playing the lichen rock and that's the Lyc- that's the, the only rock, difference see that justifies the dce a little bit more as it well. does the lichen rock is also a hard counter for um the buzz wall garb decks because claw slash yeah does hit 110 but then a uh, diancy prism star brings it up to 130 
keeping yeah. keeping in mind though um when i played it none of those cards were out no like as in like, <laughs> the cards that we are now struggling to play against those were there at Nobody the time. was playing them. So, yeah, that's yeah, true, yeah, I was I was only playing Zoroark GX and Buzzwell GX, and the thing is, like, I let Sven try it, and he said it's a powerful deck, but it's hard to pilot, and it is. You need to know what to play and when to play it. Yeah. So a bit like when you were saying about the Sylveon one, it can be really good, but you need to know when to play the right cards, when to hold back, when to go for it. Yeah. Um. So I think that's that's the key to this deck is knowing when to play because he only plays one judge yeah whereas i play two um he only plays three guzma and i play four so i'd be interested to possibly try this one and uh-huh. see how i get on compared to mine i definitely think he's um, managed to do something there and i think it's definitely focusing on the zoroark element of it more it's a zoroark deck with buzzwall in it whereas the right. deck i was trying to make was a buzzwall deck with zoroark in it i don't even think i had the full four four zoroark in it I think I played 3-3 because yeah, I was yeah. fairly concerned of the fact that I wasn't playing double colourless. How how reliable was Zoroark actually going to be? So that was my issue and I think that's where I've messed it up. I tried to put my cargo into it to make the draws more consistent and then at that point I thought this deck is broken. I broke it. It's unfixable. And then I scrapped it and I moved away from it and I didn't touch it again after that. Now looking at this this makes a lot of sense so yeah hats off to i guess all of us but mainly jacob who actually stuck with the deck longer than the rest of us <laughs> <laughs> um another deck i want to quickly touch on is this insane seventh place deck from xander not even gonna try it and it's steelix steelix the jank card from Celestial Storm has the same art as it did when I was like 10. And Hoopa from Shining Legends now. Jacob, you weren't here for this, but Ian and I had a bit of a discussion about this deck. And okay. then, then we got a little bit mad about it. And then... <laughs> then it, It's got two energy? What the hell? Then the madness turned to confusion. Yeah. But when we look further into that energy, right, because this is where we had the issue, right, there seems to be really no reason for that to be a rainbow energy right now we could justify the counter energy because it plays one tapu lele to move damage however mm-hmm. how much damage are you actually doing when you don't play any energy i guess shrine of punishments is there there is shrine of punishments so you the idea of this deck it looks like for anyone listening is just to literally put up a high HP Pokemon like a Steelix that has 190 HP stage 1 or a Waylord that's 220 HP and just leave it in the active. Just leave it, let it take some hits. Now, why he plays a split of... Why he plays more Steelix, I'm not sure. Again, like... No, no, I've got more questions. I've got more questions now because, right, why is he playing the Steelix? When he could just play Wall Waylord. Probably because Steelix is weak to fire, which is a better weakness than Grass, because you're still seeing Galissapod running about and Shaman. Okay. And Steelix is resistant to Psychic. So if yeah. he's running through items and Yeah, helps that's a good point. That's a very good point. Okay, okay. That cleared that part of it up, right. So the counter energy we decided was for Tapu Lele to magical swap the damage that he was doing from his two Shrine of Punishment. Fine. But then, the Rainbow Energy, we could only really find a few uses for. Now, Articuno GX uses Cold Crush GX. Discard all energy from both active Pokemon. Right? Makes sense. Because then, he can discard energies. Right? So that's what the Rainbow Energy is for. Okay. But the only other thing I can find to pay with a rainbow energy is Psy Wave. But then he's not playing a choice band, so what's the point in playing Psy Wave because then he can't knock out a Rayquaza? I don't understand it. I don't get no. it. There seems to be no reason that it's not... The only the only thing I can think of is that he plays the rainbow energy over a water energy, right? To put one damage on Articuno GX so that he can pick it up with Acer Roller. 
That is literally the only reason I can think of is to get the GX card off the board. Because he could have literally played a water energy and it would have done the exact same thing. And I yep, don't that's... understand. And I really, to be what? honest, I'm not 100% sure why he plays counter energy, but it's fine. Okay. It's such a weird deck. It has so many trainers. 44 trainers, and a lot of them are one-offs. Um, he plays one acrobike. One acrobike. Legend. He plays... <laughs> He plays two Shining Punishments, one Brooklet Hill. Okay. I, I don't understand. How did this deck do so well? It looks like it looks like someone fell into their bulk and just took what stuck to them. It's yeah. bizarre. And we were talking as well about the fact that he plays two different Wailmer. Uh-huh. Which which is just just makes me angry because I don't know why. The only why reason I can see Wilmer? of playing two different Wilmer is literally because he couldn't find two of the same Wilmer. That is genuinely <laughs> the only reason I can see. They have the same retreat cost, they have the same HP, they evolve into the same freaking Pokemon, but they have the same weakness. But one of them has an attack for two energy, but it only does 20 damage. The other one has a type for three energy, but it can do. I don't know. I don't. It's hurting my head. I don't like it. I don't know why. I don't know how. Right. No. First, I don't know why I played it. Second, I don't know how I got seventh. Third, I don't understand the deck, and that is what's annoying me more than anything else. I just don't understand it. Unless, unless the rainbow energy is to use gold, uh, cold crush, or did you just say that the GX to discard all the energy? Tail crush. Uh, yeah, no yeah, yeah, cold yeah. Crush. yeah, but it could have literally been a water energy. Yeah, water does the exact same thing. True. But within the, the rainbow, he can potentially use Hooper's attack. One but dark. He can but also do that with the counter energy. Because he would need to have attached the counter energy and the rainbow. Mm. So the counter energy, if he's behind on prizes, counts as two energy. But if he's ahead on prizes, it only counts as one energy. Yeah. Right. So he's already behind on prizes, so he already has fulfilled the dark energy requirement. It's the same with uh, Steelix's attack, Tail Crush. That's a steel double colorless. So that's the same reasoning. If he has to be behind on prizes for that to count as three energy, mm. so he's already fulfilled the dark or the steel typing. Literally, the only thing I can think of is so that he can put the one damage on Articuno so that he can ace roll it and pick it back up. That is the only thing I can think of. I think I figured it out. Right? The Onyx has Rage. That's what I was looking at. It so, does 10 so, more damage. So he wants to do 20 damage with Onyx's Rage. <laughs> Either that or ace roll it is the only things I've got. Either that or he couldn't find his energy and that was the only one he could find. Oh, don't. Stop that. <laughs> stop that. No, the, the thing is, the guy who has made this list, Sander Wojcik, I don't know how to pronounce his surname, but that's a name that I recognise. He's He's been on streams, he's done really well at regionals and things like that. Before. I know why you recognise his name. It's because he got 16th at London Internationals with Heatmore Raichu. We have talked there, about him before. There you go. And right. then at the last regionals in Leipzig, uh, he played <laughs> Wobbuffet Hooper, and in a Dutch Open in 2017, he played Waylord. Yeah, so I think this guy, guy has got a bit of a a bit of a thing going here. <laughs> yeah, he, he is obviously an incredibly high level player. I think the word you're looking for is an incre- incredibly high level troll. <laughs> but like the the other thing about this as well is there's no Lele GX, there's no, no Macargo. No. So how would you see all these one off supporters? How do you get them at the right time? Stevens Resolve four of. True. That's how you I do it. I guess that's a point. I guess that's a point. Yeah. That that kind of works. Absolutely insane list, guys. Absolutely insane list. Truly baffling <laughs> to me. I mean, here, like, there's there's no consistency here, right? He's get or, or Angaroo, right? Put three cards from your discard pile to the bottom of your deck, which is fine. But then he only has one Looker. So what is the point? But no other decks even play Looker. No, no. 
so it's bizarre insane. it's truly bizarre uh, the whole thing like, is just absolutely I, boggled my brain al has a wee shrine to this guy in, yeah. in his bedroom or something like this is al's god <laughs> yeah definitely the, king of the rogue troll decks it's absolutely insane there was one other deck i kind of wanted to quickly touch on and uh, now i can't remember what that deck was um um brain heart uh <laughs> was it coco it was coco weevil that was the other one um i kind of wanted to touch on this deck because it's one i've been playing a variation of and um the one reason i wanted to bring this one up is because of how absolutely awesome this tech was so this was coco weevil it was played by uh, it got 20th place and it was played by philip not even gonna try it uh Lish, Lish, nailed it i'm sure um, that was a hundred percent right i'm sure that's I'm, what his I'm family sure call him um a- apologies to anybody that's offended by that pronunciation he is a lovely guy <laughs> talk to me at sheffield yes ian played this guy at sheffield jacob um and it, it was a very quick match um so oh, uh, quick game three yeah i won course. the first one <laughs> nah, we'll take that then um so i i mean i guess as a whole we hold like one victory over this guy so that's pretty good going um yeah, something we i've been playing a variation of this deck for like two weeks now three weeks um so it's tapu coco weevil spread but this plays slug mama cargo whereas mine doesn't and it also has lots of little one-off techs including the latios which uh, jacob's been playing the shiny legends one breakthrough and it also plays one survivor with the more poison ability from um burning shadows and i was like wait what <laughs> he's playing poison barb which is awesome <laughs> and i actually seen on uh, twitter uh I think it was yesterday or the day before someone posted just um i think poison barb just got played on stream not 100 percent sure though and that was his whole tweet i was like what <laughs> <laughs> tell me more <laughs> i can't even remember who said it but yeah so poison barb with survivor so that you could do an extra couple of damage counters per turn like what is that is that how we're playing this game now i mean it just the, all these decks, man, they just show you how insanely wide open this format is. It's, it's just... A busted <laughs> wide open, man. It's Shrine just... of Punishments is the best card we've ever been given. I love it. Because it has made so many decks just so viable. Suddenly spreads yeah. viable. Baby Coco's uh, like one of the best cards in the format, arguably. Um malamar's now a spread deck apparently like oh it's so cool it's so cool to go do you know what why don't we try this a little bit differently and it, it's so exciting man the format is more exciting now than i think it's ever been for me since i've started playing anyway this is the most excited i've ever been about a format and i mean that deck is a uh, probably about 45 cards the same as mine and it's one of the one of my favorite decks i think i've ever played is a spread deck that i've been playing the past few weeks i played it at the league cup i talked about it last week on the podcast and um, obviously you guys were there but for the people listening um we talked the way that i did talk about it last week and it was it's such a cool deck but um yeah this just shows how you can squint at it a little bit and make it just a little bit different it's, it's just insane and, and you're right on the one hand it's it's so wide open and it's so exciting because of that and on the other hand you're just like i don't know what to play how do i tech against everything you don't know <laughs> exactly that's that's the beauty of it you it's know just utter it's now not about teching against certain decks it's now about wait a minute why don't i just play a deck that i want to play yeah. and you know the rest of the format be damned because there's only going to be 30 people at my league cup and they can't well, all counter me. Well, <laughs> well, take, take that with a, a pinch of salt there, because you might end up playing Metagross. <laughs> I did play Metagross that one time. It's, and it's I did, a great deck. And I, actually remember, and I actually remember moving 600 damage counters during that game to win. 
If I'm not mistaken, you're the one that brought it up, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's a great it's a great deck, but just be careful with, with what you wish for. Just just move six hundred damage and win the game. Six prizes in one turn. <laughs> well, it would have been six prizes in one turn if I could do maths. Because it took five prizes <laughs> when I should have taken yeah, six. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I still won. <laughs> you did still win. I still won. But it was like, I went to the loo afterwards and came back and I was like, uh, maths is hard and I should have won. <laughs> <laughs> because apparently Lely has a lot less health than a Metagross. <laughs> Very true. But yeah. Oh, but yeah, so so that was Germany Regionals, or uh, uh, Ockenbach, what was it? Offenbach. Um, Offenbach. Some really cool decks. Oh, Passimian Tapu Koko was another one that was popping up as well. Uh, quickly have a talk about Passimian. Passimian's a cool card, and it's a card that we used to see. Um, it was a card, I played Passimian at my first ever League Cup. I lost every game that day, but we won't go into that. And... <laughs> This was when Passimian didn't have counter energy. <laughs> Passimian had four energies in the whole deck. My first game was against Lycanroc GX, not the good one. The one that discards energies. How was I supposed <laughs> to suspect that? We won't go into that. Um, but yeah, Passimian, looking pretty cool. Did pretty well. Got 30th place. Um, played by someone I can't pronounce. And I mean, Passimian Tapu Koko spread... Um, so you spread, 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 and then Passimian takes one shot. So that's pretty much, I think, the way it's going to go. Cool deck, man. And it's... Yeah, Passimian's always been a fun card since we... was It was Sun Moon Base. Yep. The first one came out, wasn't it? Yeah, it seems so long ago now. I think what... I remember playing that at pre-release. <laughs> pre-release, yeah, man. That was where yeah. I met you. It was, yeah. But, so Passimian is a freaking awesome card, and... I, what I love about Passimian, and it's the same thing I love about Night March, and it's the same thing I'm going to love about Lost Thunder, is uh, when um, Lost March comes out. Um, yeah. It's playing cards that have that little uncommon stamp down at the bottom corner, because there's nothing more satisfying than taking a knockout on a big, expensive GX card with an uncommon card. See, when we yeah. were knocking stuff out with a Joltic, see, when people were running about with Rayquazas that cost 25 quid, or mega mutus or some some crazy expensive card and you were knocking it out with a joltic that was satisfying the same thing with vespiquen shout out to my baby vespiquen who's still sitting in my binder waiting to be played at some point because it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah that, that that i just wanted to quickly notice um, that Passimian got 30th place and Passimian's amazing that, that was all i wanted to say there um you guys, anything else you want to do, talk about before we wrap up today's episode? No, I think you've, well, for me, I think you've covered everything. Um, I'm actually quite excited. I might build the, the Sylveon deck for Thursday. We'll see. Uh, oh, just to test it. <laughs> <laughs> How? Because I don't want to play it. I mean, it, the, the we'll Sylveon a week amazing man it, it it's such a funny deck to play against and it's definitely something that you should build because it's good um although completely unrelated this week i think i was talking about playing uh a metal deck so <laughs> completely unrelated though i naturally i was actually talking about playing naganeel stack attacker last week and i think i'm gonna go through with that if i find the time to build the deck because i don't know when i'm gonna build it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not 15 minutes before we're due to start. Oh, that was bad. That was bad. We need, we need to work on that list to get the deck actually. <laughs> Guys, you think I can build Maganado stacks in the next 15 minutes? Yeah, probably. Nope. <laughs> 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 no, I can't. <laughs> the only thing I want to say before we finish up is about my change in Pokemon philosophy. Of so, course, yes. I, I, I play this game for fun as much as I play for anything else. And that's a mistake. Uh, <laughs> this game Sorry, you about, play for fun? This game isn't about fun. This game's about winning. Um, so so my, new, my new rule that I adopted after the League Cup when I was having fun playing Metagross um, <laughs> is that I am, I'm just going to play the best deck in format and I'm going to try hard the holy hell out of that particular deck and, and see where it takes me. So... I am 100% 
on the Buzz Guard Weavile train, the, the list that Caleb Gedimer won Philadelphia with, um, and the, the articles on Poker Beach are terrific that he's written and yeah. it's so detailed and it's it te- takes you through matchups, it tells you why every card's in there and reading that, I'd been playing that deck for a wee while without the Weavile and I'd really been enjoying it. Um, I think it's just as a fun deck, but I'd been playing Spread and I'd been playing Metagross and I'd been playing other things as well. Um, but after having read that and really looking at the, the intricacy of how he built that and why everything's there, I'm going to totally commit into that for the time being and see if I can see how it goes. Can go and win some cups and stuff like that coming up in November. Um, I think it's a good way to be. I, th- I, th- I think one of, one of the problems, and I know, John, you've said this as well, that you play a deck for the league on Thursday and then next week you want to play something different yeah. and you're playing different things online and all that, and I do that as well. Yeah. Um cuz cuz it's fun to play other decks. Yes. But if you if you if we're seriously wanting to go to cups and try and win, we need to know the decks inside out and I'm going to try it with this one and see where it goes. Fair enough. I will say one of the best times I ever had was when I was playing Gardy. I recognize Guardi as the best deck in the format around about the time that it came out just after worlds i decided there and then Guardi is the best deck in the format couldn't see past it even with metagross running about i thought Guardi is the best deck in the format during that time i got my first top eight uh, 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 cup i took uh top eight in poke beach with the same deck almost card for card the same deck and finish top eight in the next cup I went to as well with Guardi. So there is definitely merit to playing the same deck over and over and over again and just practicing and being good at it. Well, and I, I had the same experience with Guardi as well. Um, cause yeah. you, that was when we were went to the, the challenge one week and then it was the cup the following week at Paisley, wasn't yeah. it? And you were playing it with Sylveon, weren't you? Yes. Um, and I, I don't play it with Sylveon, but I, I found the same thing as you that it, I was, we had to drop from the challenge because we had to transport issues and personal reasons, etc. But at that point, I was four no, um, with that deck. So, le- history is instructive, I guess. Yeah. If we're playing to have fun, we play what we want. Yeah. If we're playing to win, which you've decided you want to win. And I, I commend that because you know what you want. Do you know what I mean? Like that's fine. Mm-hmm. Definitely, man. Play the same deck. Be good at it. And it would—it's something I would say to anyone listening that does want to get a little bit more serious and does want to maybe not win all the time, but you know, push the top eight finishes, push the the top cut finishes of whatever they're playing. Do you know what I mean? I'm, we're we're talking about early cups that have thirty people. You tend to get a top eight of four to eight people people listening to this might be going to bigger cups they might be going to even regionals or something like that really if you want to get good or even just your local league if you want to get good and you want to get the first place finishes and maybe top four play the same deck practice it keep practicing it and then think about what you want to change it's so simple to say i play I play f- these cards because why? Like uh, the, the one I was thinking about earlier was like back when back in the last format when we had things like floatstone, we had other cards that made one of techs a little bit easier, and there was a very defined meta. We played cards in a one of situation, like we would play the one of baby Buzzwall because on a one turn of the game it could knock out a Zoroark. And that was relevant and that was that was fine everybody did it and it was fine and it worked now with a format so blown wide open the one of tech isn't as important so consider that when you're looking at your list lay out your list lay out your list every single week and justify every single card in that deck and that's how you start getting good at it because you think about your deck make changes revert back make notes take notes on your deck and that's not obviously for you, Ian, because I know you're an extensive note taker as is. Um, <laughs> but like for people that are listening and that they want to push their game to the next level, and I'm not saying become the world champion. I'm saying go from 
finishing 16th at a League Cup, 14th, 19th out of 30 people, finishing the top 8, finishing the top 10. You know what I mean? Push it just a little bit every now and again. And you, yeah, Ian, you know fine well you can win a League Cup. You know fine well you can do it. I know fine well I've got it in me to win a League Cup, and I'm sure Jacob could as well. Absolutely. But it's just I mean, like we've made top eights with made top eights with Golly Garb, made top mm-hmm. eights with S B on GX, and these are the de- uh, decks that you know maybe you picked up the week before or something yeah. like that. So maybe if you'd played those decks for four weeks, six weeks, a couple of months, whatever, and really learned them inside out, there's maybe a, the results go more your way. There's a player that is out of Dundee or that kind of area. I think he's from Aberdeen, Kai. Um, so hi Kai, if you're listening, hello. Um, he plays, and I only realised this the last league cup we went to. He plays one deck. He plays Zorark Black and Rock, and has played Zorark Black and Rock since before rotation. And Kai regularly finishes in the top eight of tournaments. He is yep. a great player. He put me out. My best ever finish at league cup was f- uh, top four, and he put me out. Uh, you were the same cup. You finished top eight, right? Yep. Um, so. And that was a, I'm pretty sure that was a 60 card mirror between me and you. Um, so it's not as if the, the deck let us down or anything like that, because we both did well. Yep. It was that he was better at his deck than I was at mine. It was as simple yep. as that. He played Zorok Lycan Rock, and that was a beatable deck for me. Yeah, same thing. Well, not quite the same thing. The deck that I played at that cup in top eight was a little bit of a tougher matchup because it was Golly rather than Lycan Rock. Yes. Um, which made it a little bit harder but again I think that's a deck that I believe it was Michael yeah. had been playing constantly so yes he had he'd I'm, been playing that deck for a while and that's another that's, player that is constantly finishing in the top yeah. of tournaments and I would like to I'd like to think that when we got to some of those tournaments at some point in our careers in Pokemon that mm-hmm. we are regarded as those players that finish regularly in the top X of tournaments because that is something I've always wanted. Like I, I enjoy finishing high in the tournaments, so Absolutely. and I tend to do quite well when we go to the tournaments like this because I, I don't know I get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, not at all. It's it's skill. It's having a good deck, all that kind of stuff as well. Because we, like we we all consistently finish in sort of top eights. And yeah. I know Jacob when you were at one we were playing Golly Garb, you were out. You got top nine. You got ninth. You know, so I've, all... I think I've I think I've had ninth three times. So, so, oh. then, so like, we we all we all finish in pretty high spots, but then we all change decks and yeah. we all try, come up try and reinvent the wheel and things like that. And I think you with the spread obviously because that's what you've been playing a lot of. And Jacob, if it's Buzzwell Zoroark for you or whatever it is, especially in a format where you don't know what you're going to see, so the more knowledge you have about your own deck, the stronger you're going to be. Um. And that's that's kind of where I'm going with it, and yeah. and I'm going to see how it goes. And that's not a horrible. Like you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be sorry for that. That's a that's no, a good way to look not. at the game, and it's a it's an exciting. It's it, you're taking the game in a different direction from yeah. what you're used to, and there's nothing wrong with that. And um, pre-release is in like three weekends, so that's that's always fun, and that's where you play. Crazy you get to play some crazy cards like then, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, the, the, another thing I quickly wanted to mention is it's something that I'll probably because we're we're nearing the hour mark in this podcast, and it's something that I'll be talking about in the weeks to come. I am taking part in Pokebeach's ninety six player tournament. Um, the tournament isn't posted yet whether I'm actually in or not, but I am a premium member, so I should have a spot unless there's like ninety seven players and I'm the only person that's and it's all pre, it's all premium members that have signed up. So. It should be that I'm in. Um, I think I'm going to play Coco Spread. As we've just talked about, it's the deck I've got the most practice with at the moment. It's the deck I'm enjoying in this new format. And I think it's the deck that's going to take me the furthest. So I will mention it again as we go through because we'll obviously be doing this um, next week and the week after, the week after that, and the week after that. You know what I'm getting at. So over the next month, I will play out seven rounds or something and i'll keep you guys updated as we go all right awesome i just wanted to quickly mention that anyway i guess that's us it's getting late my dog is absolutely raging that i've not taken her out yet so (laughs) i'm gonna have to go the boss is telling me that i have to go 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll see you next week, guys. Uh, it's been absolutely fantastic, guys. If you have enjoyed today's podcast, leave a comment down below. Tell us how we did, and tell us what tell us what you're playing in this format. Tell us what you're excited about because this format is busted wide open. If there's something coming out of um, German regionals or even any tournament that you want to talk about, something that's exciting you, something from Lost Thunder that's exciting you, leave it in the comments below and let us know about it. All right. I'll say goodbye. I'll let these guys say goodbye and then we'll end up the podcast. I'll... Catch you guys after. Thanks, guys. See you next week. I'll see you next week, guys. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.